in order for all of this to make sense, for Oklahoma and Texas to leave early for ESPN, that benefits ESPN. It doesn't necessarily benefit the Big 12 right now unless a new contract can be started a little bit early with both ESPN and Fox. What doesn't benefit Fox for Oklahoma and Texas to jump off of their network with the Big 12 and join the SEC exclusively with ESPN unless you find a way to make some kind of a deal, right? And when you start talking about deals, then you start talking about this that Ross Dellinger reported on over at Sports Illustrated yesterday, and that is uh, sources say playoff expansion talks rejuvenated as key potential vote looms. University presidents are moving on discussions that could put expansion as early as 2024 back on the table. That is before the contract is done with ESPN, right? There are four more years of contracts that are, eh, not contracts. There are four more years on that ESPN contract. And that is, you know, it's a pretty big deal because the reason why this thing was voted against last year was a lot of people said it had to do with the non uh, or the exclusive negotiating rights that ESPN had at that point, right? The three big ones that voted against it, the only three that voted against the 12 team model that was presented were the Alliance, right? The Big Ten, the Pac 12, and the Big 12. Well, now everybody has come back out and said that they are in favor of an expanded playoff, but basically everybody has said, hey, we prefer this to be on multiple networks. That's where we can get the most money, et cetera. Well, if ESPN has the exclusive rights all the way through 2026, that doesn't benefit ESPN to get rid of it unless they are making it up by getting the Red River rivalry or the Red River shootout or whatever you want to call it. But if you're getting that, if you're getting Oklahoma against Florida, if you're getting Texas against Texas A&M, if you are getting Texas, Georgia, uh, Alabama, Oklahoma, you know, what matchups like that that will generate millions of views, if you're getting those on a regular basis, yeah, it might be okay for you to lose some playoff uh, content, right? That's the way that I'm seeing this. So the way that this playoff expansion works And I think it's going to get voted into. Um, Now, it says in a scheduled virtual meeting on Friday, which is tomorrow, the CFP's highest-ranking governing body, the Board of Managers, is expected to chart the next course in playoff expansion by potentially holding a vote that, if unanimous, could open the path for expansion as early as 2024. Now, this is interesting because if they vote for this, That basically means that they have talked to ESPN and they have talked to Fox and whoever else about going ahead and splitting up a bunch of those playoff games. If you are moving to a 12-team model, you are adding additional weekends to this, right? Because 12 teams, you have two extra weekends. You're you're basically tripling the field. So you're going to have two extra weekends. You will have 5 versus 12, 6 versus 11, uh, 7 versus 10, 8 versus 9 on that first weekend, then the winners go and play the top four, and then the top... Uh, th- so those eight would drop down to four, which is what we have right now, which would drop down to the national championship game. You are creating a whole mess of new inventory. Well, if Fox can get their hands on that, that might make it a little bit easier for them to uh, let the Big 12 out of their contract so that Oklahoma and Texas can then move over to the SEC early so that the SEC deal can go ahead and begin. It, it's a whole mess of stuff, but it's, it's all basically deals. How does this benefit everybody? Now, here is one, one issue that they may have problems with, and that is the, the CFP and Bill Hancock and, and all that bunch have already got their contracts in place for the sites that host the national title games in 2025 and 2026. So if that is the case... I, I'm I'm very interested, in, and obviously, this is all paperwork. You can find a way to get out of this. Somebody, somebody will be willing to pay for it because it's going to generate a whole mess of, of more money, right? Just a lot more revenue for all these programs, for all these networks, for everybody that's involved in this, including the CFP. So, 
Yeah, I, I think Fox uh, could get some of those playoff games, even though this is exclusively owned by ESPN all the way through 2026. I think ESPN would be willing to give up some of that to be able to get Oklahoma and Texas. And then the Big 12 would be willing to let them go early so that they can go ahead and get started on their new deal, et cetera, et cetera, right? Because they might be able to poach some of those Pac-12. It's, it's all aligned. It all makes sense if you just follow the tea leaves, right? <laughs> that's, that's the way that this goes. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show. <laughs>